Hey there, baseball fans. Nathan Rohde and Shooter Hunt here for you with the latest edition of Coffee and Curveballs. We're finishing up our recruiting series. We've run through all the Power 5 conferences. Now we're looking at the teams that are not part of Power 5 conferences. You might call them mid-majors, but I think there's a lot of programs uh, in this talk today that would argue against that. Uh, but nonetheless, we're taking a, you know, a few programs from around the country that are not a part of the Power 5 conferences uh, whose recruiting classes stand out to us. For sure, and you, just, you said it right off the bat. A lot of people like to call them mid-majors. This isn't football or basketball. In baseball, these programs, a lot of the time, are better than the Power Fives. And you're talking about the American Conference, Big West, Southland. These are all conferences that very much compete and beat the Power Fives on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So going through these recruiting classes, these are guys that are going to compete for Omaha, regional hosts, super regionals, like – Power five doesn't mean much in baseball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're looking at it from the perspective of just college sports in general, like football or basketball, it just doesn't work. I mean, no mm -hmm. one's going to call Cal State Fullerton a mid-major. You know, no. they're, they're uh, an Omaha team competitively almost every year. So the best way to look at it is non-power five. Um, and one of those programs that does, wouldn't want to be called a mid-major because of, you know, recent success uh, we'll start off with, uh, and that's Houston. For sure. And the American Conference right off the bat is in the Power Five. It is a Power Five conference. They go at it every year with the top, some of the top RPIs in the country, but Houston has been hosting regionals for the last five, six years. Coach Whitting's bringing in a bunch of dudes, and they're just showing out every year. Um, been to a Super Regional, not, not to Omaha yet, but they're on the verge. And with this class, I think they have a chance. Right off the bat, the top guy – for me, is Derek Cherry. Love everything he's about. Two-way guy who can probably hit for them. He's athletic, so he can move around the, the field. But on the mound, he has a chance to be special. It's a hard slider. Up there in the low 90s right now, but the slider really plays. And we've talked about that in the past. Texas kids just seem to always come equipped with sliders. <laughs> um, and Cherry's one of those guys. So an immediate impact arm. Uh, his first year on campus. Weekend starter who... Coach Witt, I'm sure, is going to maybe use in the bullpen to get key outs, but he's a big-time dude. And then at the top of the order, kid named Brad Burkle, one of my absolute favorites. Coach or Toby Bicknell, our scouting director in Texas, we watched him for the first time in mm -hmm. Jupiter last year, and just an absolute spark plug. Gritty-type player, but can really run, gives great at-bats, and just his baseball IQ at the top of the order – makes him a guy that Coach Whitting's going to really feel comfortable putting right into the lineup uh, early on in his career. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, you're talking about Texas, and Rody, we've talked about it before. What does Texas always have? Arms. Arms on arms on arms. <laughs> and it's true, and that, that's what Houston, Houston's no difference. You know, TCU, Texas, um, you know, Texas A&M, all, all the guys from the, the Power Five, are bringing in a lot of big arms, but so is Houston. You're mm -hmm. talking Hunter Mayo, a, a nice arm that's going to come in and challenge for a weekend spot early on. Ty Abraham is, to me, the guy that they need to get on campus. And possible draft guy, 90 and 92, big physical frame, um, but a guy who can get out immediately and challenge for those weekend roles. Um, but overall, Houston's bringing in quite the class here and the big arms up front. Coach Whitting just continues to reload. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you talk about the arms. and It, it just goes to show the depth of mm -hmm. talent in Texas. I mean, we've talked about how deep the 2018 class is across the country, but historically the state of Texas is always deep. And when you look at it from this perspective, it's, it's pretty obvious because, you know, you mentioned Texas A&M, Texas Tech, Texas, TCU, all those programs are bringing in the top guys from Texas, but you look down the list to see what Houston is getting. We'll talk a little bit later about Dallas Baptist, see what they're getting. It's yep. pretty obvious that there's. it almost seems like there's an endless supply of pitching in the Lone Star State. For sure, for sure. So let's, uh, let's move into the Midwest now and uh, another program that uh, has had some recent success, not only churning out draft prospects, but also making some noise in the playoffs. Uh, and that's Kent State. And I know Shooter, you being a, a former pitcher, uh, you've got you've got to like what this class brings in because of the coaching staff that they have there. Definitely. And Coach Birkbeck is a legend in the in the pitching world. I played with guys uh, professionally who were at Kent State, and they swear by him. Uh, and the proof is in the pudding. He's churning out guys who 
you know, early or up from the recruiting circuit, okay, they're good, they're good, but they get to campus and it's like, mm-hmm. whoa, where'd this guy come from? And it's, well, Coach Birkbeck does a great job with them and he knows what he likes. Um, and they're bringing some really good arms. Like Ryan Kircher, a left-hander out of Pennsylvania, which Pennsylvania's got a lot of hard-throwing guys this year. Um, but lefty, 90-92 right now, has steadily crept and made that jump. Could be a draft-type guy, but on campus he gets with Coach Birkbeck, and all of a sudden you're talking about, hey, he makes a jump, top three rounds mm-hmm. in three years. Um, and Rodia, another kid out of Ohio that I really like is Nick Dwight. has been up to 94, big physical 6'1", 210-pound frame that Coach Birkbeck can work with him. But I know you really like a kid out of Indiana that could develop into a big arm. Yeah, you know, just like we were talking about Texas a minute ago and the arms that come out of there, Indiana is known for the pitching that it produces. And yep. Luke Albright uh, is a guy coming out of this Indiana class. It's a really deep Indiana class, too. So he kind of mm-hmm. sometimes is forgotten about, and he shouldn't. Um, but he's 6'4", 210, oh. 86, 89. He'll bump a 91. It's easy to see that you know he'll probably throw harder down the road. Um, low 70s curveball. I mean, it's regular effort on on the uh, on the mound. Uh, he gets some kind of late sharp bite to that breaking ball. Um, some depth in it. So he's a guy that you know in most years he might be like the top one or two guy in indiana but it's a super deep class in the state this year that's true um so kent state obviously picks up a, a pretty good one in albright uh in this class for sure for sure kent state always rolling <laughs> indeed so we'll shift down south to uh florida international university who uh you know had a, a recent coaching change marvel melendez came in from alabama state and he brought in jared goodwin and Jared Goodwin is new to the coaching, the college coaching world. He's not new to the coaching world. Um, you know, he was he worked with FTB for a long time, one of the top travel programs in the country. Yep. And the reason that I am super excited for FIU and what their potential is is because of Coach Goodwin. He just has this natural ability to develop strong and lasting relationships with players. And when you're a parent. And even when you're a kid and you're looking at where you want to go for college, that's a big factor. You've got to, you know, find somebody that you feel like you fit with is going to get the most out of you, but also, you know, is basically going to look after you while you're away at college. And Jared Goodwin is big time in that regard. I have never talked to a player that had anything bad to say about him. They love him. The parents love him. Uh, He's one of those guys that it's easy to see how much he cares about the players. For sure. I mean, Jared's done a great job. He's great to sit with at a game and talk mm-hmm. baseball with, just in general. It doesn't even matter if it's his recruits or not. He'll talk baseball with you forever, which he is will. awesome. Coach Melendez, I don't want to say they've ruffled the feathers, but the establishment of <laughs> that Florida recruiting scene with Miami, Florida State, U of F, uh, FIU has crept in. And this 2018 class has kind of put them on the map. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. You know, Starting out, out at the top, you got Raynell Delgado, who's a shortstop, but kind of a utility guy. He can, you know, move around, play anywhere. He can play up the middle. You could stick him at third base. You could stick him in the outfield. Um, the key for him is that the bat really plays. Um, you know, he, he can hit. He's got bat speed, quick hands. Um, and he trusts his hands. Um, so he's a guy that, you know, he could come in right away and be, you know, a top to middle of the order hitter for FIU as a freshman. Now, he is a draft prospect. He's in the PBR Draft 100, uh, but he's one of those guys, you know, I'm repeating a line. I've said it over and over before, but I'm kind of on the fence. Like, I could see him tipping either direction, um, Mm. and only time is going to tell us that. I don't think he's a slam dunk either way. Uh, But if the Panthers can get him on campus, uh, that would be a a big-time haul, Uh, especially considering some of the guys they got coming in behind him. you got Jarrett Ford, a second baseman from Georgia, just a scrappy little guy, like, you watch him on the field, and you're like, that guy's going to be a good college player. Uh, mm-hmm. Just plays with energy, uh, uses the whole field when he's at the plate. Um, but the last guy I want to bring up before uh, moving on is Franco Alleman from Florida. Big, high waist, long, lanky frame. Pitches at 87 and 90. Um, obvious room to, to grow there physically. Um, has a longer, uh, longer arm action will lead to some command issues at times. Okay. Uh, but still, a very, you know, high upside projectable arm that, you know, with 
what they have on campus right now, the guys that came out of 2017 class, and if they can get most of this class in, you're looking at FIU being at least a regional contender every single year. Definitely. So uh, another great example of a team that is not a mid-major, even though they're in a quote-unquote mid-major conference, is Missouri State. These guys are competitive year in and year out, and it doesn't seem like you know the next few years is going to be any different. Um, for me, the two main guys that I want to mention are uh, Anthony Heron and Dakota Katowski. Who's Just big boy? Big physical dudes. Like those guys are going to get to campus and they're going to hit in the four and five, or, you know, like right in the middle of the order, four through six right away and they're just going to mash you know you can you could probably call them the bash brothers for missouri state <laughs> that's awesome and but what's really going to carry them and has carried missouri state for a while are the arms and two guys that i like for them ben crookshank left-handed pitcher out of illinois six four long lean projectable body it's a drop and drive delivery out of a high three-quarter slot uh right now probably grazing 90 or so and i think he may be up there again in the spring but it's really projectable, and there's more in the tank. Has confidence in his changeup, um, so a starter type for them that could really do a lot as a left-handed pitcher. And they've produced a bunch of arms the last few years, you know, even first-round arms. So um, that's not out of the question for Crookshank in the future with a jump. Mm-hmm. And then Hayden Younger, um, another one out of Illinois, and they, they've done a good job of reaping the benefits of such a great Illinois class the past you know five six years going back for a while now mm-hmm. but young guy who i really like the arms clean it's quick it's whippy it, it jumps out of his hand uh, right now right around 90 but 90 to 94 in the future is not out of the question and with what they've produced in the past um i could see uh younger making that jump and being he and crookshank that friday saturday one two punch who in the super regional where missouri state has been taking that that back to the home because they've been there before. Mm-hmm. Next up, we've got Wright State. And if, if you're any program in the Midwest and you want pitching, you're probably going to start looking in, in Indiana because, yeah. you know, arms come out of there all the time, as we said. And that's exactly what Wright State has done with this class. You know, right at the top, you got B- Bradley Bremer, right-hander out of Indiana. He was uh, up to 91 in the fall, you know, projectable frame, 6'5", easy to see him tipping the scales at 200, if not now, down the road. Um, so definitely a high upside arm coming in for them. Uh, and then another guy out of Indiana, who shooter I know you like, uh, in Jacob Gilchrist. Yeah, Jake Gilchrist, I mean, similar, we've been talking about these Midwest arms, big physical kids. And Gilchrist is one of those where he's 6'5", 195, been up to 90, but has that high ceiling that at a, a non-power five, they have a time, the chance to work with them and really develop their arms instead of having to go win now, today. Mm-hmm. Hey, Jake Gilchrist, we're going to allow you to grow with us so that as a sophomore and a junior, all of a sudden, you mm-hmm. are a dude. So he's a guy for them that could develop into a weekend arm in the future. And then one other I want to throw in there because I saw him in the summer and he's one that on the recruiting circuit can get lost because he's a smaller um, – arm kid named brock narker he's a right-handed pitcher i also saw him play shortstop for um at the ohio top prospect games and just a kid that i really liked i put in my notes like hey this kid is not the the sexy name that's gonna be six four you know 200 pounds and hop on the mound throw 95 but he will win games tough kid hops on the mound feel for how to pitch and a coaching staff that can hop you know just kind of count on this kid to go in, get key outs late in games, and won't be scared. I mean, Wright State's never scared. Ever since Rob Cooper was there, now at Mm -hmm. Penn State, but he developed that program into, hey, these guys come in, and they're no joke. This is no pushover. They're going to compete and eventually beat us. Mm -hmm. And then Coach Lovely, they've just continued to keep it in the family, and now with Coach Mercer, they're just passing it down, and they continue to reload. Mm-hmm. They could easily move into a Power 5 conference and oh, be yeah. in the middle of the pack and competing for you know every year. So Definitely. obviously, uh, you know, program's doing really well over there at Wright State. But uh, next team, we're, uh, next program we're going to talk about is a couple hours down the road from me, uh, and that's UNC Wilmington. 
Um, they got a huge win last year when Greg Jones, uh, who's a really twitchy, athletic shortstop, potential center fielder, um, decided not to sign out of the draft and ended up on campus. I think he could be a dynamic player for them. But topic is the 2018s. But if you couple him with what they get in this class, Wilmington could, could really make some noise in the next few years. And for me, the guy at the top is Justin Jarvis. Yes. Uh, you know, projectable right-hander. Uh, he's going to get some looks from scouts, um, but I don't. I, he's not a slam dunk draft guy just yet for me. Um, just solid stuff across the board. Fastball is you know eighty eight to ninety one. He shows shape and depth to the breaking ball. Um, you know, it just kind of looks the part on the mound. Um, doesn't scream off the page, but the more you watch him, you're more like you know I, I like that guy and I like what he's got coming for him in the future. Yeah, and in a down, I guess a, a down year is relative, but in North Carolina, I'm sure the coaching staff, Coach Scout, they're hoping Jarvis doesn't make that massive jump during mm-hmm. the spring and get drafted because he's the guy that makes an impact right away. But a right-hander, Jake Smith out of North Carolina, Troy Langmeyer, a left-hander, those are two really nice arms for them to get on campus. Jason Hudak, for me, is a guy who you know could be a two-way player, really athletic, uh, from the outfield, it's 90 miles an hour from the outfield. Uh, I know Brandon Hall, our scouting director in North Carolina, really likes what he could be for Wilmington. Mm-hmm. And then one one small one or a player to, to throw in there is out of Kansas, Michael P- P- Michael Piccolo. <laughs> and I watched him last year just dice up somebody in Fort Myers. And the velo wasn't there yet, but the arm's so clean and it's so effortless that I think he will make that jump in the future. And once he does grow into that frame, which is still adding strain, he could have a chance to be a starter because the fastball, curveball, changeup, and he just really has advanced feel for pitching. Mm-hmm. And if that last name, if you look at that last name and see that he's from Kansas and it seems like it's familiar, it is for good reason. He is the son of J.J. Piccolo, mm. so who works uh, front office for the Royals. But uh, I wonder he's so good at that baseball. <laughs> he's got that background, so... Uh, but moving on up into uh, venturing into the Northeast now, we're uh, looking at the, in the Huskies of UConn, uh, who have had you know some very good success you know for a Northeast program the last several years. Uh, not only have they um, you know produced some big leaguers, but they've also you know made some noise in the playoffs. It sounds like they've got a really good team uh, you know for this spring coming up. Um, but uh, this this recruiting class is, uh, is is pretty solid. You know they're mining the talent up there in the Northeast. Um, and for me, the top guy is uh, is Patrick Winkle. Um, sure. You know his older brother. Uh, you know is already at Connecticut, and they have some similarities. Uh, the younger one, Patrick, uh, is a catcher. Shows some soft hands behind the plate, uh, but like his brother, uh, there's some thunder in that bat. They've both they have strong hands. Barrel just whips through the zone, and every time they make contact, it just sounds different. So saw him hit a home run uh, in Jupiter uh, wow. this fall. Uh, so definitely a, a big bat that could come in for the Huskies and hit in the middle of the order uh, pretty early on. Definitely, and, and UConn has really stepped up to become the beast in the Northeast. Mm-hmm. Um, not the rhyme it there, but <laughs> Coach Sanders, I mean, they're bringing in guys after guys. And that, like you talked about, the team this year is big. They got the, the Kate kid, the left-hander, who's you know mm-hmm. a stud, possible first rounder. Mm-hmm. But they bring in those arms. And Coach Josh McDonald, the pitching coach, he and I, you know, talk back and forth, and we always talk about, hey, curveballs win on Fridays, so that's why they got Kate thrown there. And they're bringing in some big arms here too. Michael Burrows, a right-hander out of Connecticut, physical kid, been creeping up into the mid 90s now. I think he was up 93, 94 during the fall. You know, possible draft guy, but I think he gets the campus mm-hmm. and at UConn with what they're building there and the AAC, which all those Southern AAC teams that have to go up the stores in, you know, middle of April, early May, <laughs> it's a little chilly. Puts them at a little bit of a disadvantage. Oh, yeah. You're seeing mid-90s arms and some hard breaking balls. It's it's not fun to hit off of, but they, they've got a bunch of arms like that. Jake Sanderson, right-hander out of Massachusetts, you know, just – a quick arm, it's clean, something that Coach McDonald can work with, and I'm sure he's excited um, excited about. And with them have, getting the throw to Winkle, hopefully if he doesn't get drafted or if he doesn't sign, mm-hmm. I mean, this class could turn to something special. And especially with what they have going right now, it's continuing to move the ball forward. Mm-hmm. Next up we've got South Florida, who saw a recent uh, 
coaching change with Mark Kingston going to South Carolina, taking Coach Current uh, with him. But uh, still some continuity there as Billy Mull is elevated to the head coaching position. Uh, so it seems like even though they lost you know, their head coach and a very good one at that, seems like they're still in a pretty good uh, position to uh, not only keep their recruits but continue being competitive down the road. Yeah, definitely. And, and we've talked about with a few programs on this list, um, kudos to these universities for believing in their assistant coaches mm-hmm. uh, and elevating them and understanding the work that they put on the recruiting trail and building up the program. Um, Billy Mole is one of the best, one of my favorite people in baseball. Um, he, he did a great job as the pitching coach with Coach Kingston and stepping into his first head of coaching job uh, with a good team, but with a great class coming in. Um, Justin Stewart is a player who I thought for a while in Florida was last year getting lost in the shuffle because there's so many talented kids who, you know, pop in big numbers early on mm-hmm. that a kid like Stewart who was, hey, this kid's got a quick arm. It all works. But the velo hadn't jumped yet. And I thought a lot of schools were sleeping on him a little bit. And South Florida did not sleep on him. And he was bumping 90 to 94 early on in the summer last year with a good three-pitch mix, good slider. He's the type of guy who I think, again, we talk about stepping right in and pitching big innings for Coach Mole. Um, And then Brandon Treff is a kid who I watched in Jupiter who can really swing it. Mm -hmm. Outfielder can run. You know, it's going to give them some pop at the top of the order uh, early on but does not get cheated. I, I really like what he's about. But the one I really, really like in South Florida's recruiting class in 18 is Pablo Garavitos. And the reason I like it is because he's a two-way guy. Left-handed pitcher on the mound, probably going to be 87 to 89 early on, maybe later on in his career, 89 to 92, with Coach Mole, mm-hmm. you know, leading the way. Um, but good feel for a breaking ball and a changeup. It's a quick, athletic arm. And he can also swing it. He's a good athlete. Um, I don't know with him being you know, a possible weekend guy if they'll trot him out in the outfield every day, but he'll get some time out there, time at DH possibly, but Garabitos is the guy who I think they need to get the campus um, to continue this good run that they've had. Mm-hmm. Speaking of good runs and kind of going back to what we were talking about before with arms coming out of Texas, we're now looking at Dallas Baptist, and you look up and down – their recruiting class, and it's just it's an arms race again, and they're and they're mostly not all mostly from Texas, so it just again speaks to uh, that depth of talent. But you know, shooter, why don't you clue us in on on Luke Trahan, who seems to be their top guy coming in? Yeah, you know, it's it's ninety to ninety two. It's hard breaking stuff. It, these guys that go to Dallas Baptist, they seem to have hard out pitches. They epitomize what we talk about in those Texas arms. They throw hard and they have hard breaking stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coach Heefner has continued to roll out arms after arms after arms. I saw them play a couple of years ago, and I felt like every kid that came out of the bullpen was 96 to 98, <laughs> and the slider was 88 to 90. And I was looking at it, hey, is is this not like a major league bullpen that we're, we're rolling out <laughs> with right now? Um, but th- their developmental phase, and uh, similar to some of the other schools we've talked about here, they kind of take their time in the recruiting process. There's so much talent in Texas that they evaluate, they know what they like, they they stay in touch with the player, and then they get them on campus and develop. And mm-hmm. Trahan the type of guy that can do that. He's mm-hmm. got a true out pitch um, in a slider type cutter. Um, it, it's just hard, and that's what they, they roll with. And then Javon Smitherman, another right-hander who's got a quick arm that you, know, you just look at and you know hey, this kid's going to Dallas Baptist, he's going to develop and probably be a mid-90s arm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know Toby McNell, who's our, our Texas scouting director, was previously a recruiting coordinator. Uh, he was at Kentucky for a year. Prior to that, he was at Air Force. And he told me you know, when he was at Air Force, he would always go into Texas because you can go into Texas, shake a tree, and a kid that throws 90 will fall out. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously uh, there's a lot to choose from down there. But one last guy that to bring up uh, for Dallas Baptist before we wrap this up, uh, and that's a right-hander out of Massachusetts of all places. Whoa. And that's Alec Baker. Um, he committed early on, but uh, he had Tommy John surgery, uh, so he's actually going to miss this spring. His next pitches thrown will be at Dallas Baptist in the fall, uh, but he can run it into the low 90s as well. So, again, you're talking about just premium arm strength coming in for Dallas Baptist, and you know that's how they stay competitive year in and year out. And, Brody, I want to throw in one more because I can't believe I forgot about this guy because I've 
been following him for the last two years, and <laughs> I think he's going to be great at Dallas Baptist. But Jose Gutierrez is a catcher who can really receive. The arm's not plus strength, but everything works beyond the plate, and I'm big on receiving. As a catcher, you need to steal strikes for your pitcher, mm-hmm. and he does that, and he does it with what Toby Bicknell says is his favorite player in Texas, just the makeup. Kid mm-hmm. gets it and, and just has feel for the game. And he's got some some real good juice in the bat. It's almost plus power, but he does not get cheated. Mm-hmm. So there's your look at uh, some non-Power 5 programs and their recruiting classes across the country. Just a few that we picked out that really stood out to us. Obviously, there's a lot more out there um, that are uh, strong classes and should help a lot of these programs compete at high levels in the next few years. So... Make sure you jump on prepbaseballreport.com. Check out the rest of our content. Got a lot of stuff coming up, you know, as the new year approaches and we cycle into 2018. You can always check out Coffee and Curveballs on Facebook. Just find Prep Baseball Report's page. Uh, We'll have podcasts again, you know, running through the conferences. If that's more of your thing, you want to just pop it on while you're in the car. Uh, But we've got plenty, uh, plenty more stuff coming your way. Moving on now, Coffee and Curveballs will shift to just one time a week. Uh, The next one will be on January 2nd, and Shooter and I are going to look back at the 2017 year, some of our favorite moments, while also looking ahead to 2018, some things we're anticipating, and maybe even making a few bold predictions. So thanks for joining us today. He's Shooter Hunt. I'm Nathan Rohde. This is Coffee and Curveballs, and we'll see you guys at the ballpark.